Hello, happy Wednesday, and welcome back. I received a letter today. I don't usually receive anything in the mail, but I thought I'd share this one with you. Give me a sec. Dear Andrew, off to a good start. Your game sucks, you're never gonna make it, and you'll have to go back to working a 9 to 5 job. Kind regards, your brain. My brain is a Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome if you're new. I'm Andrew from Stasis Booth Games and today we're back to a proper topic video. No top 10 lists here. As I said last week, topic videos and devlogs are now going to be split up for the time being, with the topics releasing every Wednesday and the devlogs every Friday. If you're liking the new format, just let me know down in the comments. Now, even though we're not doing a top 10 video this week, I hope you did enjoy it last week. There were some comments where people learned quite a bit and said there was some good information in there. So if you watched it, thank you very much. If not, there will be a link to a card right up here. And if you leave a comment and just let me know what you thought of it, that would be great too. All jokes aside from that intro, criticism is a big deal. It can happen internally, externally, extraterrestrially, and it can really blow up your day, week, month, or even your year. While criticism is a big part of daily life for everyone, both internally and externally, I'll be focusing mainly on what I've experienced as a game developer and what I go through on a daily and weekly basis. So let's dig into the topic of internal versus external criticism. We're going to start with the internal, the thoughts, the emotions, and then we'll move on to the second part, which is going to be kind of juicy, which is the external, where I'll go through a few things that I encountered when I released my first game, Seventh Chance. So let's dive right into it, starting with internal. I made a post on Twitter the other day. Now, if you're not following, there are links down in the description, both to my personal and the game's Twitter accounts. And I made a tweet about what I experience when I'm trying to unwind and relax. It may be when I'm in bed at night and what my brain's doing, or when I'm just trying to relax and play a game and I just can't because of what's going on up here. So you can see the tweet on screen, it was just basically when I'm laying in bed, my brain saying shit to me and just trying to make me feel like a piece of crap, which is not good. The awesome thing that came out of this is there was so many replies that other people experience this too. So you've got to know that you're not alone when you're going through this kind of thing. Just reach out. My brain was trying to tell me one thing and I just, I believed it to my core. I could see mental images of my game environments looking absolutely horrible and that is just what was stuck. I could not fight that no matter what I was trying. The next morning though, I opened up my project. Amazingly, it did not look like what was in my mind. I was as happy with it as I was the night before when I closed the project. I'll repeat what I said in my first ever video on this channel. And that is that the brain can be a dick, a massive one. These thoughts, if you don't catch them, will get to you. They can destroy your morale, your motivation, and very easily get on top of you and destroy your project by eating away at you from within. Left unchecked, they'll cause fear, avoidance, and procrastination. If you haven't seen my video on procrastination, there'll be a card up here as well. I really highly recommend checking that one out. How do you combat this though? Now, I'm going to go on the record, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I've got nothing to do with a field of mental doctory, but this is just what I do when I'm having these thoughts, or when negative things are happening, and how I deal with it, and how it may help you too. If you are struggling and do need support outside of the game dev space, please contact a mental health professional or your doctor. Don't go it alone, get help if you need it. With that disclaimer out of the way, these are the things that I've picked up over my 35 years on this earth, and things that help me, but some things that I've also learned to do very recently that are helping in a big way. Now these aren't in really any order, although number one is fairly important. It's just what I do to combat the internal criticism. If I'm feeling overwhelmed, scared, anxious, I try to just breathe a step back and relax a little. Now I've discussed this in an earlier video, I can't remember exactly which one, so there's no card up there. But you just need to take a step back, try to figure out what the thought is that is causing this problem. It may not be evident at first, and it may take a lot of practice to actually figure out how to do this, but just keep at it. Try and nail what is going on here and what is causing these moments of distress for you. It may even help to write down what you're thinking. Sometimes I find that trying to think of what the problem is when I'm already in a weird emotional state 
isn't helping and you just need a pen and paper, just start writing down exactly what you're thinking and just try get it out of there just a little bit. In the event that my brain is telling me that my game looks like absolute trash, what am I doing? I can't just combat that and we'll go through that in a little bit. But you can't just combat that by saying, no, it looks good because you've got this mental picture in your head. So what do I do? Well, since early development, I take screenshots and videos all the time. I share it around to random people that even pops up when I'm doing some streaming. If you're not following my Twitch account, please do. I'm streaming every Tuesday and Thursday. But by taking these screenshots and videos, it really, really helps because it gives you ammunition for these thoughts. If you have a catalog of screenshots, and especially if it's you're later into development a couple of months in and you've made some progress and you can see that progress through these screenshots you've got all the ammunition you need put it on your phone in a little album and just when you're having these thoughts these doubts or these mental images that your game looks like crap open that album take a look at the pictures this has really helped me i can combat the thoughts and what my mind is showing me and number three i don't fight the thoughts. If my brain is only saying to me, your game sucks and you won't make it, just saying no to those won't work. With a screenshot example, it does because it is actual evidence right there. You've got the pictures, you can get that picture from in front of you into your head. That's fine. But when it comes to thoughts, I have to do something completely different. My brain and quite possibly yours, if you try to combat your game sucks with, no it doesn't, it won't work. You can keep repeating, no it doesn't, but that your game sucks will still be sitting in there causing some trouble. Now, here's a few techniques for this. Uh, there is the option of basically just trying to think of a song and try to think of all the lyrics for that entire song. Just flush it out with something else entirely. You can also do something kind of like Weird Al Yankovic and turn those negative thoughts into the lyrics and then maybe you'll find a little bit of humor in them and your brain just kind of won't pay attention to it anymore. So another thing I use is rearranging the words in my head, and this works particularly well for long phrases, and you'll see why in a second. If your thought is, your game sucks, you'll never make it, try mentally figuring out what that is backwards. Or you can write it down as well, but mentally figuring out what it is backwards is gonna take a lot of brain power and will break that train of thought. So for instance, if your phrase going through your head is, your game sucks, you'll never make it, it becomes it make never really, no, it make never, you'll sucks game your. Now you can see there was a few little clips there of me struggling to get through that, and that is the brain, you're just breaking that train of thought. So for me it works, try give it a shot. Now that was a lot of information, I'll try to create a chapter list and put it down in the comments so you can flick back and forwards easily. But let's get on to the juicy ones. And that is external criticism. Now, external criticism is a, is a really fun one. Well, no, not really, not at all. It differs from internal because you know it's not you causing the emotional stress, pain, fear, or anxiety. Okay, I want to stress with this topic that you don't stress about these things. It's things to be aware of in case it does happen when you release your game, or you might have released a game and it's happened and you didn't know how to deal with it. These are just, again, my thoughts on what to do here, but it's worked for me in the past, so maybe give them a shot, or just enjoy seeing what happened to me. <laughs> I'll run you through a few scenarios. Some of these are personal experiences, and there's a few that are hypothetical that I'm conscious of, but I'm not stressing about. Negative reviews. Negative reviews are unfortunately part of being a game developer, and of doing anything public-facing. Unless you're really, really lucky and get a 100% positive review on Steam, which can happen but you'll still be getting some negativity from somewhere. So a week before releasing 7th Chance, and this kind of ties in with external, I was having nightmares for a week that I was gonna get entirely negative reviews, and it, it kind of destroyed me. I wasn't sleeping well at all. And I haven't even gotten close to the release date for my new game, and over the course of a few months, I've had a few nights where I've already started having nightmares about it. But that is more of an internal thing, so please go back and watch the internal section of how you can deal with those things. But having those nightmares before the release of 7th Chance did not help when the negative review actually hit. And it hit pretty hard, and within the first few days. This is a game that I'd sunk so much time, so much energy, and put myself into. Of course it's going to hurt. So how did I deal with the negative reviews? Well, there's two types that I've primarily encountered. There's the short and sweet, not worth it. And then there's the overly long essays about 
this game isn't what I wanted. But if you do get negative reviews, the best way I've found to deal with them is basically just ignore them, but make sure to read them. And this isn't just to cause you emotional pain for no reason, there is a very good point to doing this. This is because in some situations you may find that negative reviews are good. How can they be good? They're bad. While they might point out something crucial that you're missing from your game, there may be a feature such as the save system that you forgot to add or just isn't working. It's something that you can fix, something you can learn from. As I keep saying, game dev is a learning experience. And the thing is, game devs need to learn to listen to their audience. Okay, a lot of times your audience may not know what they're talking about. They may say that they want something that just doesn't make sense in the game. But I guarantee you that a few times it might be in a comment or a negative review that you will find something that you completely looked over. And by fixing that, you may be able to turn that negative review into a positive. So make sure you listen and learn. Don't be so pig headed to say that this is my vision. I'm not changing it. Yes, it's your vision, but you want other people to enjoy it. Now, negative comments. Now, negative comments, I treat a lot like negative reviews. The main difference is that there is no barrier to entry. You don't have to purchase anything to leave a negative comment on a Twitter post. It might have been a screenshot, it might have been a GIF, it might have been a YouTube video, it might be a comment on any of the social media platforms that you're trying to tackle. Try, again, not to focus on them. Just kind of let them go. Hopefully you're also getting a lot of positive comments. So try focus on those, but make sure to read them if they actually have some meat and content to them. If it's just a reply to your screenshot that says this sucks, ignore it. Hell, even block the person. They could just be a troll. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you're not focusing only on the negative. But if you are reading the long ones, make sure that you are ready to close that comment and pull the pin as soon as something is going wrong. If it starts causing you any kind of mental distress or anxiety, or it's really just pure hatred that's being spewed at you, get out of there. Double negatives. Actually, no, not, not that one. That was a terrible joke, I'm sorry. Mostly negative reviews. Now, this is a pure hypothetical worst case scenario. I haven't dealt with it personally yet. It's something that sits in my brain, but I know fundamentally that I've done the right things and it shouldn't happen. But it's something that has happened to other devs. So yeah, be aware, but don't be scared. If you release a game and receive 50 reviews, 50 reviews is already amazing, but 45 of them are negative, then you may have a problem. And it's not necessarily just external criticism and mean comments anymore. It could be valid, but if it happens, I've got a plan. Like with a single negative review, collect, analyze, see if you can salvage and change people's opinions. It could be something as simple as the settings menu doesn't work, so people can't change their resolution, their field of view, they can't rebind their keys. And for some people that is really important. Maybe you've gotten the 45 people that are very interested in their settings menu, and you've immediately lost them so they've left a negative review. The thing is, it shouldn't happen as long as you followed some basic design principles, tested early, tested often with people that aren't necessarily in your inner circle. You should be able to catch a lot of these issues as long as you're listening to them and can fix your mistakes and take a step back from your perfect baby, listen to people, fix the issues without compromising your vision, of course. Then you should be able to avoid this potentially horrific scenario. Well, that was a big one. I think it's about time to wrap up. As I've said in this video, be aware, but don't be too scared. A lot of this stuff for you, if you haven't released a game, is purely hypothetical and may not happen. But as long as you've got the tools to be able to deal with it before it does, and you know potentially what might happen, it may just lessen the impact a bit. And with the internal stuff, try to find ways to deal with that before it gets too overwhelming you burn out and cancel your project. And also, if you do need help outside the indie game dev space, please contact a professional. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Andrew from Stasis Booth Games. If you haven't checked out my new game yet, it's available to wishlist on Steam. I'll also put a link to the gameplay trailer up here for you. And if you haven't subscribed or shared this video, I would really, really appreciate it. I'll see you on Friday for the devlog. And until then, stay indie.